Alright, hello everybody. This is actually my second attempt at recording this video. Uh, so hopefully it'll go a little smoother the second time. Um, as you can see, we're back in the VM. Last time we got Emacs installed. This time, I'm going to do some very basic configuration. Basically just installing evil mode, uh, so that it's easier for me to use Emacs, since I'm used to having the Vim bindings available. So, first of all, let's go ahead and open Emacs. And we're, op we're greeted with our splash screen. So we're going to go ahead and create emacs.d init.el. That's where we're going to do all of our configuration uh, in this VM. So the first thing we want to do, um, we're going to require the package package. OK. We're going to evaluate that. And then the next thing we need to do, uh, as I found out when I was recording the last video, is that we actually do need to add Melpa to our list of package archives. So package archives add to list package archives. Yeah. Let's get it. Melpa HTTP. Oof, I'm gonna have to check this one. <laughs> I never reopen my website before. Alright, take a quick look at this. So we are following along basically with the last video I did about uh, Emacs, uh, Emacs for LaTeX, um, but we're going to quickly diverge from that once we get out of this basic configuration in this video. So we got that taken care of. After that we're going to go ahead and load use package. So use package is what we're going to use for um, installing all of our other packages including uh, evil mode. So basically we want to check unless package installed p so again this is a predicate function use package package install use package so yeah this function is just going to tell us whether or not this package is installed or this function package installed p use package uh, if it's not installed install it Oh, I did forget one line already. Require package, and then we need package initialize. Uh, we can read about that. This loads your Emacs packages and activates them. Okay, so once we have some installed, we will actually want that. Uh, yeah, so package install use package. After that, I think we're pretty good. So that will that'll help to ensure that use package is actually installed. Go ahead and evaluate that. Yeah, so we had to add Melpa as one of our package repositories because of use package. Okay, we just have to wait a second while that's installed. Perfect. And then, once we know that that's installed, we can go ahead and require it so that we can use it for our other packages. The next package we want to use is called Evil Mode, uh, as we saw in the last video. So again, uh, we're going to ensure that that's installed with this ensure keyword for your use package. And then we're going to do a little bit of configuration. Mostly we're just going to turn it on. And then, as I found out when I was recording the last video, we actually don't need um, undo tree anymore. We can just set, uh, well, we'll do this after we get evil installed. So let's go ahead and install evil. But apparently Emacs now has um, undo redo functionality that can be integrated with evil mode. So we can just set uh, evil uh, evil undo system to undo redo and it will use the built-in Emacs stuff. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, evil set undo system and then let's do control HV and describe variable evil undo system and you can see it gives us some help here. So in the past we've used where's my mouse? Well I can't see my mouse apparently but um, in the past we used undo tree, um, but now we can actually set it equal to undo redo. So there's some nice new functionality in Emacs 28 right there. Okay, there we go. And now I should be able to undo and redo. Fantastic. That's really nice. I needed to make that change in my configuration as well. Alright, so that's pretty much going on. That's pretty much all I had planned for today's video. 
uh, we just wanted to get Evil Mode installed. Uh, however, now that we do have it installed, uh, we could make the change that I tried to make in the last video uh, with changing the color of the bar in DWM. So let's hop over there real quick, try out our new key bindings. Ah, yes, I did forget one other package we want to install specifically for this uh, DWM stuff. It's called Rainbow Mode. So this package will actually display colors inside of the buffer. So if I switch back over here and I activate Rainbow Mode, you'll see now this would have made it very easy for me to identify which of these I needed to change in the last video. So I'm just going to go ahead and make this red. And if we recompile that, we should be good to go. I think in the first version of this video, oh, I forgot to revert this change, but I also changed the border pixels to three. So now it's we've got a slightly wider border here. Okay, great. So that takes care of that. Now, I did notice one other issue. Uh, at the end of the last video, after I had already turned off the recording, um, is that Emacs is actually not loading our config file. And the reason for that is that by default, it created this .emacs file for us, um, but instead we're going to use init l inside of the .emacs.d directory. So I, I believe if we just delete uh, .emacs and also delete this backup file, um, it should not create it again. So this time it should load our init file. And you can see that now we are in evil mode. Fantastic. OK, I guess this went a lot faster the second time. Um, so one other thing I'd like to change, uh, xd init l, uh, is we should also set our custom file. So let's set cube custom file. And we'll set that to .emacs.d slash custom el. And then we do need to load that custom file, or uh, we'll run into problems. Can I open? OK. So this is actually something nice to point out. Um, load takes some additional options. Uh, for example, no error. Like, I don't care. Yeah, no error, true. I do not want it to error out if my custom file doesn't exist, because I really don't care about my custom file. <clears throat> it's just to keep it from cluttering our init file here. Let's make sure it didn't make... Okay, we should be good to go. Uh, the other change, uh, you'll see here, uh, we need to take care of these backup files, but I'll do that in a future video because I need to actually check my config for how to do that. But anyway, I hope this was a good start to the new Emacs series we're going to be working on. Um, in the next video, we're going to be looking at completion frameworks. So as you can see here, we're just using the default uh, completion in the mini buffer here. So in the next video, I would like to do kind of a little tour of the available options for that. I used to use Helm when I first started using Emacs. Um, and then after getting frustrated with Helm, I tried out Ivy. Uh, and then I even went back to just iDo mode, which is built into Emacs for a while. But now I've moved on to using Vertico with a bunch of complementary packages like uh, Marginalia and uh, Consult and Embark. So we'll probably do a little tour of those next time and then settle into using Vertico. But until next time, uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you then.